Hello, my name is Jorge Castillo, and I'm here to support um, closing down White Clay and removing the illegal activities taking place there. And I work at an agency called Alcohol Justice, and we work to regulate the alcohol corporations in the United States and also on tribal land. And uh, the reason I was here today is because I wanted to talk uh, about some of the current debate that's going on about legalizing alcohol in Pine Ridge. Uh, I'm just here to offer um, a few statistics for the community to consider, consider when they go out and vote on this referendum. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the community possibly, possibly generating a lot of money from legalizing alcohol on the reservation on the homeland. And I was looking at the data from White Clay and the taxes that they give the state of Nebraska every year because it would be it would be more likely than not that the revenue that Pine Ridge would get would come from the taxing of the liquor on the homeland. And uh, last year, uh, the state of Nebraska received $113,000 in taxes from White Clay. So predictably, that would be about the same amount of money uh, Pine Ridge would get if they were to legalize alcohol on the reservation on the homeland. Um, and $113,000 in my opinion, probably not enough money to regulate the, uh, the crime that's going to happen because of it, regulate uh, the treatment of the folks that are going to need assistance from the consumption of alcohol. It might just be enough money to run the liquor stores, uh, but um, that's even in question with this amount of money. Uh, so financially, I don't know if it's a good idea. The best possibility would be to, if Pine Ridge could actually control and own the liquor stores like they do, for example, in Utah, uh, then the rest, the homeland could keep most of the profit. But that might even be questionable because the profit might also not be that much. If Pine Ridge cannot control their own liquor stores, they would have to um, abide by South Dakota law when it comes to licensing uh, of alcohol. So, that's, so those are two concerns that uh, I think the community should really keep in mind if if you want to legalize. Oh, I'm a Mila Preshni, much a guy, don't knife. Yeah, Carl Blook, a Redwater Creek kitchen in Tawahi. When I'm a yeah, yeah, the vote in Young Tashke is the alcohol hunter. He, uh, me, I tell you, Charles. Hechetusha <laughs> Metake pi yuk champo. He ata heche tushin. Tribe ki hamas kakarink takia. He a yuk champo metake pi. Why ate ki ha? Why a wana lila yoti yukia? Tohani he maska tribe ki a petu ala ta maska ni cheya. Hocha tuk tetahena. When you are coming up, you can't get a little bit of 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 my own cat or the Kilichigli has a lecha. Cha, eh, Dona Lakotia, Hena, Anna Marcoptam Hechina, Metaquepi, eh, Nititaque, Uichak Yakon, Hia Apo, Shichak is a lecha. Cha, eh, one, one year two, where one ectar, Wahena Wahinashi, on a Ibelucha. Lila mit Hakoja Ota, Sant Hakoja Ota Chabluha, Hohena, 
Hokata Yoti Kapachis, Hochale, White Clay Air, Kile Air, Trakoja Metroki, which argued with an air to Hoki, Kakushe Ankum, Ata Lila Yoti Pine Ridge Early, Oyankek, Mitake Pena, District Yohila, Menua Kawi of Hea Higle Matanashi. Lila Yoti Yukam Trankakt, Nata, who had Ikana, one state air hockey, who had one year cocked. Air at the Henu Hayoichi, government Kiha Hena Hitchell, Chincha, one Oganama Unib, Chayamitaki, Yuk John, Hia Airpo, the Chaji of Punkyak Tashke, Chay, Ewa Hena Prinkte, Nahake. How my dog le Otiha and me at Tom Chayant. No, Glala Lakota and Machana. Le Manipiha. I bet to my head legalize your tele after we chala. Dakwe we chala ki he. I bet to Kiyuki. To how legal is it? Okay, le skawi chasha ki chungsaki le na tima hute staking na na ko na ko iwong la ka ki le na si cha unkina hute treaty ki le yes gluha unkina hute hecha na to han. Let's say we are taking Abelis out to Hitcher. And I are tuned, Disney. Jurisdiction, not tax key. And I are tuned, Disney. Not tea are cheapy. Not propane, not good are cheap. As to Han, let legalize them hunter. Ah, Tashicha. Yank. Skawi Chasha ki Chunksaki, Lane Churns, na Dry License, na Daku, Warn La Havalena, Naku, Hute Law. Cha Hena, Lane Honko Chaka, Hani Rapi, Oyateki, Consoki, Lena Yuk Chante Hitcha, Yena, Leches Esh Yahash Kampi. Na ye mazes kaki toki wonka be ash na sulaki ichela kich umpi chanteki kich umshin oyateki ichak tu chanjumshin na na kon le apetuki leche se manipiga un chimshin un leche waglake chahoki na makompo na chanteki kich umpo Nasula ki ichela ki chumshinyo. Niecha chukate kia. Leche se unk unyo kale yesh. Ta unk unyo pi. Ito han le legal aja amhata shi cha unki aate lo. Na wa shtete shni. Cha honk la kholi abanana na kona ma khumhechi. Tita kwe ni trokki, kholaki, nako, ocha kya kapo. Hechak onshin hanta. Lena, taki pkhele na. Aki iluk chante, shicha wa shichu ki, le skawi cha shakli na yuki. Shicha on kwate. Onkash, tiyo ni chante, nisha ata. To me, on Chahena Yaki Nako. If he tell a lakotaki, Makoche unhappy. Not to wait, cha, then I let you say harsh gun in our station, legalizing till a then I yes cup. Chaye mother skaki one copy. Ne ye cha. Na la khota ke ke tagnu kichu teshni. Ash ma khota ke on mazas kalena 
e tu ampi as toni la cota ke wan kapshin cha ton la cota ke el kopshin hata tosh ke ni ta oni ota hon if khet le che se mala cota cha le che se oya te ke uchi cha kam cha apetu ki ule Legalize alcohol in Apple and cheap shit in law. Now you can pull, try to hit it, let a petty key walk like a law. How my dog will ask it. I want to share with the community uh, a perspective of, of what uh, we're dealing with here. It's not just about the referendum and it's not just about um, white clay. 80% of the alcohol in the United States. The majority of the alcohol in the United States is controlled by three corporations. And these corporations are InBev. They uh, own Budweiser. They're based out of Belgium. Uh, Miller Coors. They're based out of uh, England. And Diageo. They produce a lot of their steel spirits like Captain Morgan and Guinness Beer. Now, these three corporations that are global corporations um, they have their own domestic policy, they have their own economic policy. In similar ways, like corporations during colonial times set their own, set their own agenda. And the objectives of these corporations is to go into any country and begin to deregulate their laws so they can maximize profits. They, to them, it doesn't matter if your child goes to prison, it doesn't matter if your husband becomes an alcoholic, it doesn't matter if you lose a family member in an accident, all they care about is profits. And they purposely give money to politicians to deregulate laws and to weaken law enforcement and to weaken the agencies like the Nebraska Liquor Control Commission that can impose sanctions on the sellers of alcohol and the distributors of alcohol. So this is a very deliberate attempt for them to maximize profits. In California, unfortunately right now, one person dies every hour because of alcohol in the state. And the state government has to pay $8 billion, $8 billion a year because of this cost. We're talking about judicial costs, hospital costs, illness, accidents, domestic violence, $8 billion. While the corporations have been able to get away with only paying $350 million in taxes, that would be like saying that I would have to pay $8 because of a harm, and then the person who caused the harm only pays three pennies. Um, so their objective will be the same on the homeland, and it will be the same uh, if they begin to do business here. So right now, I would urge the community to analyze this very closely, to really look at the legal ramifications, to look at the economic ramifications, and to, uh, to consider whether you want to give up your sovereignty and whether you're going to allow the ACO corporations to begin to influence your internal politics and your internal laws in the homeland. Oh, I like it. Ja mitä kyypiä opcebilla ei hake. Ja lehon lila lakota kiotiunkia. Ata on ha vakhanja la kiha state kiha. Le itomni kea national vakhanja yuchachu. Na foster homes ata vakhanja yotiekia. Shicha u chako. Na ya taku kash. Ye chikyanki kaptanyo na ish. Ya hena ata miniwakha ele etan inapha. Ya tohon shiche ki soa mitake pihani ata ihupaki yuwekho kinhe chi hemi ash. Michinche kina trakojak paku chabalha. Mitrakoja. Ay chabalutan ushu chaki lana ha. Ipaka 
For the, those of you tuning in, my name is, again, Jorge Castillo, and I'm with Alcohol Justice, uh, an organization working to regulate the alcohol corporations, and we're talking about the ramifications that legalization of alcohol would have on Pine Ridge. I just want to say a, th a, f a few last words. First, um, the argument of whether it's a good, good idea to legalize because of financial reasons. It doesn't seem like a good idea financially if uh, you're only going to receive about 100 and $10,000 a year from taxes of alcohol. It doesn't seem like it's, it's worth it financially to legalize from that aspect. You could say that if you can control the stores and own the stores, if Pine Ridge could control and own the stores, and you could apply strict limits of sale uh, of how many beers you would sell per customer, how many hours a day you would open the liquor store, and uh, that there would be no sell to minors, and no sell to intoxicated individuals, that could be a plus for public safety. However, we're not sure if, if that's possible at all because Pine Ridge might have to abide by South Dakota law. Then you would be giving up sovereignty. So that needs to be investigated. You need to uh, politically ask yourself that question. Is it worth it losing sovereignty over legalizing alcohol? So I would urge the the Treaty Council and the Tribal Council and the community members yourselves to find out, you know, what kind of ramifications they would have. And lastly, I would like to, to say that right now you have control over your community and uh, you, uh, you need to take very, very careful steps forward with this. And... Um, but regardless of what happens, uh, alcohol justice and allies outside of Pine Ridge, we believe White Clay's got to close. Whether you legalize alcohol and the rest are on, the, on Pine Ridge or not, White Clay's got to go because they're conducting illegal activity there. They're selling alcohol to minors. They're trading alcohol for sex. They are taking food stamps for alcohol. They're allowing uh, relatives to stay outside and drink. Uh, they're bootlegging the alcohol onto, the, onto Pine Ridge at amounts that are not possibly, cannot possibly be sold out the front door. You cannot sell 2,000 six packs out the front door of any of those stores. It's just too much. So if anybody is to blame about what's happening here, it is the alcohol corporations because they have deregulated Nebraska law and made it impossible to close down White Clay. It is the retailers that continue to practice illegal activities, and it is the distributor, the people distributor of Budweiser and Scott's Bluff. I always mispronounce it. I'm not sure how to say it. Scott's Bluff, I believe, Scott's Bluff, that he makes the most profits out of the sale at White Clay. They are responsible. They should be held accountable for their criminal actions. And thank you for allowing me to speak today to, uh, to the community and I hope that uh, I can come back and speak further in the future. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now I'm fellow. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to I bet you watch the apple. How the talk is. Yeah, the guy, Mila Prishni, don't like me. Yeah, me talk to the people. Yeah, Chaji of Pekiaki. Yeah, apple. Who did you love? Oh, I bet you watch the apple. 